Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Corbett and I'm a Senior Manager of Cell Engineering at Digicert. In this talk, we're going to discuss the benefits of SSL certificate scanning. We're going to start by looking at some of the most common risks and vulnerabilities associated with SSL certificates. Let's start with expired certificates. So a good example here is from December 2018, where about 32 million O2 users found themselves without data or SMS message services from breakfast to bedtime. An initial root cause analysis indicated that the main issue was an expired certificate. But of course, this event is not unique. Many well-known brands, including Microsoft, Yahoo, LinkedIn, and Twitter, have all had embarrassing outages due to expired certificates. And of course, expired and misconfigured certificates can lead to extra costs, loss of revenue, and serious brand damage, and or loss of reputation. Many organizations attempted to use what we call self-signed certificates instead of those issued and verified by a trusted certificate authority, mainly because of the price difference. Unlike CA issue certificates, self-signed certificates are free, but what most users are not aware is that self-signed certificates can end up costing them more in the long run. While these certificates can be used to encrypt customers' data and credentials, they will make most web browsers display a security alert because the certificate was not verified or trusted um, by the browser. Mostly these alerts and, and, and warnings will tell the visitor to abort browsing the page for security reasons. So these security warnings that you get from self-signed certificates will drive away potential clients because they're afraid that the website is not securing their credentials like their credit card details. So both your brand is damaged and of course customer trust as well is lost. So while the dangers of using self-signed certificates on public websites may be obvious, there's also a risk to using them internally. If you use self-signed certificates on internal websites like employee portals, databases and so on, you're still going to get browser warnings. Some organizations will advise their employees just to ignore these warnings since they know the internal site is safe. But this can encourage dangerous behavior. Employees accustomed to ignoring warnings on internal sites may also be inclined to ignore warnings on public websites as well, leaving them and your organization vulnerable to malware and other threats. And also, we want to look at what are called vendor certificates. So vendor certificates are supplied by most networking equipment companies who, who supply servers or networking uh, switches uh, and routers and so on. Uh, and because these networking uh, servers, networking equipment, they all tend to have a management interface or a management port uh, so that you can log in re remotely uh, and uh, manage and configure the device. Uh, these are often called ILO um, or DRAC. So um, ILO stands for Integrated Lights Out Management. Uh, DRAC is a similar concept from Dell. Um, and they all tend to have what we call a default certificate on that port for security reasons. Uh, however, unfortunately, these uh, default certificates are often very weak or vulnerable. They might have short keys, they probably have already expired, um, or have many other security risks. Uh, and the problem is that um, often you don't know they're there because you didn't install it, it's installed already by the, the vendor. So um, it's a kind of a hidden problem, uh, which most companies are unaware that they have. And as you can see here, I've just uh, taken a couple of excerpts from an Oracle uh, manual, which describes best practice around these certificates, which is basically to replace them with something um, more secure. Again, the reason you would do that is because the when you access that particular interface, your browser will give you a warning 
again, if you become accustomed to uh, clicking past those warnings, uh, then that can lead to problems on public websites in the future. So let's take a quick look at how typical browsers indicate these problems. So I've had a look at Chrome 86, which is one of the latest versions of Chrome. Um, and you can see here that for most issues, Chrome will give you a warning, but you're allowed to click past that warning. And if you do so, you can access the site and your session is still encrypted. Uh, this is because in most circumstances, it's considered safer to allow you to continue to the site with encryption rather than continuing to the site uh, just using a plain text connection. The exception, as you can see, is if the certificate is known to be revoked. In this case, Chrome will block your access. So if it detects that your certificate has been revoked on the website, then it will not let you proceed because clearly when you revoke a certificate, it's more often than not due to a security concern on the website. Uh, but as I said, in most other cases, browsers will let you access the site with encryption, but you'll still get a warning from your browser. And mostly you should heed the warning. We definitely recommend that you don't click past those warnings. If there's a problem, you should not continue to that website. So as well as certificate problems, as you may know, there are also risks due to the way that your SSL server or service is configured. Uh, and there are many kind of attacks and vulnerabilities which are exploiting obsolete SSL protocol versions or maybe cipher suites which have been inadvertently configured. Or it could be that there are bugs in your SSL implementation software. So a couple of well-known ex examples from a few years ago are the Heartbleed and the Poodle attacks. So Heartbleed was based on a security bug in the OpenSSL library, which is a widely used implementation of TLS protocol. The Poodle attack, uh, again in 2014, uh, was an attack based on uh, an exploit due to uh, the web client be able to fall back to an older version of SSL, in this case, older version being the SSL version three. And there was later on another version of the Poodle attack, which was based on uh, various versions of the TLS protocol as well. So again, very important that you are aware that attacks are, can be on your server configuration as well as just on the certificate problems as well. So the solution should be quite obvious. What you need really is to maintain an up-to-date detailed inventory of all the SSL and TLS certificate installations you have so that you can easily identify any weaknesses or problems. And of course, then you can fix them in a timely manner. So what do you need in your inventory? Well, of course, you need to be able to track all the certificates that you've got. Uh, and of course, you're gonna be tracking expiration dates but also you should be tracking important data like key sizes, algorithms in use, in case you need to upgrade certificates to a stronger encryption at some point in the future. Also important to have a note of certificate locations. So do you know where you have deployed the certificates? Don't forget you may have multiple copies of a certificate, particularly if you're using wildcard or what we call SAN certificates, which could be deployed on multiple uh, services or servers. Also important to make a note of what we call the certificate owner. So who is in charge of that certificate? If the owner is not known, certificates can be renewed for no good reason, which will obviously result in extra expense. Another common problem we see is where a server administrator leaves the company with no handover, and again the server certificate will expire. So it's vital to define really who owns each certificate and define a clear process for renewals, transfer of ownership and, and so on. And finally, don't forget the web server configuration details. As I mentioned before, you may still be using vulnerable cipher suites or obsolete versions of SSL. 
or your web application may need patching or upgrading to the latest version. So remember, if you don't have an up-to-date inventory of your certificate landscape, you can open yourself up to significant security risks. So the next question is, how do you collect and store the data and keep it up to date? Most networks are dynamic, constantly changing. So how will you get notified when new systems are added or old systems decommissioned? For many enterprises, this can be a real headache. Of course, you can always go down the spreadsheet route, but for large organizations, this means multiple spreadsheets and the many possibilities for human error. But probably the biggest issue here is that you are likely to overlook some or many certificates because you just don't know about them. For example, the vendor certificates we mentioned earlier, or the department that's buying certificates with a credit card or spinning up their own self-signed certificates. So a better option is certainly an automated scanning tool. Most scanning tools can be scheduled to run periodically so that your inventory is always up to date and alert you if certificates are about to expire or have some security vulnerability. Perhaps more important, if configured correctly, it should capture all active certificates on your network, not just the ones you know about already. If you're using DigiCert Search Central platform, you already have access to a powerful scanning tool. We call it Discovery. Uh, and the main features of this, uh, you have multiple options for the way that you do your scans. We have what's called a cloud scan, which will allow you to very easily and quickly scan any public websites you have. But we also allow you to install what we call sensors uh, inside your network so that you can scan any internal uh, subnets or uh, databases or data centers that you have and get a full report on all your SSL portfolio. With Discovery, you can have both scheduled and on-demand scans. And of course, we're gonna send you uh, uh, alerts if we detect any problems such as certificates about to expire. And we'll also give you detailed security reports for both certificates and your SSL and TLS configurations. So thank you for your attention. Just a quick note that the slides are available for download and this webinar is now available on demand at any time. But for further information, please use the contact us at digicert.com email. Thank you very much.